Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. My name is Giselle Soto Rivas, and I'm an undergraduate student working with the USC HEAL team. Um, oh, sorry, I forgot my, my title. Um, today, I'm presenting my research on the factors associated with the utilization of services both inside and outside of schools. For some background, um, we know that mental health problems and substance use are increasing among adolescents, especially following the COVID-19 pandemic. We also know that mental health services are critical to improving mental health and substance use outcomes, but not everyone is getting access to these services, especially already vulnerable populations have the least access to these services. We understand that disparities exist, especially along the lines of SES, but it is really unclear what other demographic factors are influencing access and how they're influencing that access, and this is really what this study hopes to answer. My research question was, what are the associations of demographic characteristics, mental health symptoms, and substance use with the utilization of therapy and counseling services, both inside and outside of schools among adolescents in Southern California? For my study, I used data from the USC Advanced Study, which is a longitudinal um, survey that surveys students across Southern California um, from the moment that they enter high school in ninth grade until they graduate high school. Specifically, I use data from waves three and four, um, with wave three looking at predictors, which were demographic factors, mental health symptoms, and substance use. And at wave four, I looked at how students said they used in school and outside of school services, um, like therapy and counseling. Overall, our sample was primarily Asian and Pacific Islander, largely Hispanic and Latin Latinx, and then of average SES. This is my first graph looking at the association of demographic variables with the use of outside of school and inside of school services. Um, specifically here I'm looking at race and ethnicity and the boxes that are highlighted are where we found statistic significance. Um, what we see when we look at race is that all races other than all races had higher odds of accessing outside of school and inside of school services compared to our reference group um, which was, were Asian students because that was the largest portion of our population. Um, and then for ethnicity, we saw that Hispanic and Latinx identifying students were, had higher odds of accessing services compared to students who did not identify as Hispanic or Latinx. Um, for certain groups, we saw elevated odds ratios, for example, um, black students accessing services outside of school. So that's like therapy. We also looked at gender and sexuality, um, and here, Again, the highlighted areas signify statistic significance. Um, and what we see is that students who identified as a gender minority or a sexual minority oftentimes had higher odds of accessing services compared to students who were heterosexual or when looking at gender or students who were males. Um, in some cases, here we can see that students who identify as LGBTQ plus had really elevated odds ratios. Um, for example, gay or lesbian students seeking services outside of school um, so this tells us that these students are accessing services a little bit more, um, which makes sense considering that oftentimes these populations are experiencing really traumatic experiences um, in their daily lives. The last demographic factors we looked at were parent education, language spoken at home, and these are really interesting because they are often used as proxies for SES. Um, and so what we saw was that odds ratios here were below one for the first analysis of demographics. Um, and so what we see for parent education is that if students have parents that have less education, they have lower odds of accessing services outside of school. So students whose parents have less than a high school education are not getting therapy that they like, might have to pay for possibly or have health insurance for. Um, the odds ratios are a little bit more similar when looking at inside of school counseling, which again might be indicative of that socioeconomic factor and the fact that therapy can be very expensive. Um, while inside of school counseling is usually free for students. Then when looking at language spoken at home, we saw that students who spoke a language other than English, either only that language or English and that language at home, um, were accessing services a little bit less and had lower odds of accessing services compared to students who only spoke English at home. Um, this again can be an indicator of SES, but it's also a big indicator of cultural differences and maybe is indicative of differences, different perception, perceptions of therapy and counseling across cultures. 
Here we're looking at um, the association of substance use with the use of supportive services, again, inside and outside of school. And we see that students who are reporting use of alcohol, e-cigarettes, and cannabis are using services more than their peers who do not use these substances. However, we see that the use is still very low. These students are engaging in risky behaviors, they're engaging in substance use, but they're only less than 25% are accessing services. Um, ideally, we'd like to see a lot more than that, um, and that's not what we're seeing here. In this next one, we're looking at mental health symptoms with the use of supportive services. And again, a similar story. Students who, have, who are experiencing mental health um, problems are accessing services more than their peers who do not experience mental health symptoms, which makes sense, but we still have less than 25% of these students accessing services. So the hope would be that if students are experiencing mental health problems, they are accessing services and they're getting help and support, but that's not what we're seeing. Only less than 25% of students are getting that help that they need. Um, it is also really important and interesting to note both in these graphs and the previous ones that for inside of school counseling, the prevalence of access to these services is slightly higher compared to outside of school therapy, which again might tell us a little bit about the role of socioeconomic status in accessing services, um, as well as that stigma associated with accessing therapy. So overall, the study really did just show us that services are being underutilized. Again, students are reporting substance use and they're reporting mental health symptoms, but they are not reporting that they're getting help when they have these experiences. But students should be getting that help. Um, we also see a really strong, really strong evidence for the role of socioeconomic status in the access to therapy. Again, in the way that in-school counseling prevalence is a little bit higher, um, showing us that maybe that is more accessible to students because they have less, um, they might have less um, economic support. Um, we also see that in the parent education and the language spoken at home data that shows that if your parent has less than a high school education, you're accessing therapy outside of school less than your peers who have parents with advanced degrees. Um, it's really important for us to use this data to inform the schools that we work with. Um, this data is really interesting to make policy changes and make larger changes like that, but we work very closely with these schools and it's really important for us to be able to inform them about what their students are experiencing. Um, and especially with this new question about supportive services, it's really important for schools to understand which other students are not, not accessing the services that they possibly need um, to better help inform the programs and initiatives that they might um, have for their students. Overall, we know that mental health support is really important for just ensuring that students are happy and healthy, but it's also really important for prevention, detection, and cessation of substance use. So it's really important that we use this data to better help schools do that. Thank you, any questions? Anyone have any questions for Giselle? We'll pass the mic around. We can use this one instead if you want. There we go. I guess in the center. Okay. <laughs> um, good presentation. I, I may have missed it, but what was your sample size and the age, average age? Um, the sample size was 2,933. Um, these are all the students that had non-missing data for all our variables, both during wave three and wave four. Um, and then the sample size were, or, the age were high school students, um, so like 14 to 17. Okay, so the final set of graphs you had were out of the almost nearly 3,000 students, only 25% utilized therapy? Mm -hmm. Oh, um, so these are looking at the students who report. So here, substance use, so of the students that report substance use, these are the ones that are. 
accessing the services. No, the next one where you classify depression, anxiety. Oh, oh yes, yes, yes. Yeah. No, yes. So, yes. yes. Wow. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Yeah, thank you. That was a great presentation. Um, I'm not too familiar with the K through 12 therapy s situations. What's the relationship between outside and inside school counseling? Like, do people typically transition from one to the other? Like, would people be in both of these categories or just one or the other? Um, so for our survey, we asked students um, both questions. We asked them if they were doing, using either. So some students put that they used both some only one or the other. Um, so it really varies like across the person, like what they have access to. Like I said, like if you are of a lower SES, like maybe in school counseling is all you have access to. And if like you have a higher socioeconomic status, maybe like you're just relying on a therapist who might be more qualified than like a school counselor or who might, you might be able to see more often than a school counselor. So it really varies. Awesome, great job, Tissa. Thank you.